I need to go. I'm not going to be nice. My name is Barbara Massey. I'm Catherine Massey's sister. You killed my sister. Cat, I'm going to tell you about my sister, Cat. Cat weighed 110 pounds, 72 years old. Cat would do anything for anybody, anytime. Cat was intelligent. She was a teacher. She was my best friend. She was anything at any given time. Cat was a protector. If Cat saw you, she probably went in her pocket and gave you some money, even though you didn't need it. Cat was an aunt. She was a great aunt. She was a cousin. She was a friend. Cat said she was a committee of one. There's nothing Cat wouldn't do for people. I want personally to choke you and leave my fingerprints on your neck because it was unnecessary. You leave 200 miles to come to Buffalo. You don't even know any black people. 95.7, that's what they said for the census in your time. You don't know an Indian, a Mexican, nobody. Your little punk ass decided to come and kill my sister. I talk to Cat every single day. You don't make your happy kid. Cat didn't have any children, but she said she had 34,000. That was the number of kids in school. Cat had so many children, our mind went boom with her own money. There's nothing Cat wouldn't do for anybody. You know what made Cat happy? Us cutting grass that we don't even own. That made my sister happy. That's what I was doing when you killed Cat. I was doing her lawn. I was there eight hours with my family, begging the cops, is my sister okay? You threw off her fucking back of her head, man. Okay. 110 pounds, 72 years old. Okay. I want to, you better stake those places. You better say cops. Thank y'all for protecting me, because I will hurt you so bad. <laughs> you have made me sick. You got my family crying. I miss my sister every day. I live three doors down for Cat. I talk to Cat four times a day. My brother Ward goes up there and sit in the park with Cat like to be. My son called Cat triple black because she was so proud of her heritage. My nephew said Cat was a saint among sinners. My sister Catherine Vasley was a great person. Cat didn't hurt anybody. None of their family did. You gonna come to our city and decide you don't like black people. Me, you don't know a damn thing about black people. We're human. We like our kids to go to good schools. We love our kids. We never go in no neighborhoods and take people out. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, you're watching right now the sentencing. Obviously, emotions are running very, very high in that courtroom as Peyton Gendron is set to be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of, of parole. And you just heard from Barbara Massey. That was Catherine Massey's sister. I mean, yeah. you can't imagine the emotions that people are going through right now. I mean, it's difficult for all of us sitting here watching this and to know what's happening right now. Um, we have Chris Belling with us here. Chris, you know, you worked with the DA's office for so many years. Talk to us about what you're thinking as you see what's unfolding in the courtroom right now. Well, it's obviously, a, a, if I can say, a macrocosm of my career. I mean, I uh, worked on many, many cases. I worked on multiple victim cases. I um, you know, was chief of homicide the year that Buffalo had 94 homicides in, in one year. Right. Uh, we haven't had that in, in many years. But uh, this case is so massive in and of itself uh, that it uh, causes uh, the emotions to run wild. I, I, on the video note, one of the defense lawyers is crying in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe the judge has come off the bench, and we're going to take you right back to the courtroom um, as things get to settle down here, because we have a lot more victims, families, members to hear from, so we'll take you back live to the courtroom now. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now you can hear the emotion in this room. You can hear people sobbing. Our crews that are in that room say all the family members are sobbing. Um, they're a little bit upset, mm -hmm. obviously, about what's happened there. And you can see the tensions rose. And, and he's being protected mm -hmm. by security. There's a lot of security. The streets are blocked off. It, it's a right. difficult situation out there. You know, and Chris, you were just saying um, this this is the culmination of so much and and there are so many emotions in that courtroom right now and you can understand too how people are feeling looking at someone who they know took the lives of one of their loved ones um, you know they're not alone in the way that they're feeling it, it, it's, it has to be difficult to stand there and, and and confront the person who you know killed someone you loved right and it, it is much much more difficult in these circumstances um, this is the, the unusual case where uh, the motive has been identified and the motive is racism and that right. makes it all the more worse mm -hmm. uh, for the families here. Uh,